Hey everyone, Nicholas here, and I've got an update that EDD put out last Friday. And then, gotta be honest, it's around the work searches and it's a little confusing. But after reading through it, uh, it really doesn't change anything except for those of you with Fed Ed claims. And there's a really important notice on that. But let's kind of dive in and see what they actually state in the text of the news release. In the weeks following July 11th, the department will begin mailing notices to claimants in phases, informing them that their specific individual work search requirements will apply to their claim. Those collecting benefits on regular unemployment insurance or extension claims will receive notices first. Notices will then start being mailed the week of July 25th to those collecting pandemic unemployment assistance or Fed Ed benefits. They also state, the requirement to search for work and the potential to be found ineligible for benefits for a failure to search begins when claimants get these individualized notices by mail with the specific work search requirements. Okay, guys, like they just threw us a curveball here. <laughs> They're now stating that on July 11th, they're going to be sending out to regular UI claimants what type of work search activities you can be doing. And when you get that notification is when you need to start doing work searches. And they're saying that on July 25th, they're going to start doing that in the second phase, which is going to be for Fed Ed and PUA. And depending on when you get that mailing is when you're supposed to start doing your work searches. This is a big change from what they were telling us over the last three weeks. Okay. And fundamentally, I think it's really uh, bad advice. And guys, like we've all prepared for coming in starting July 11th, that we were going to be doing work searches, one activity at minimum per week with either a PUA, a, you know, or a regular UI claim. And we were going to go ahead and run this all the way out until September, just one activity. And we're making sure that we're pressing yes every week when we do our certifications. They're now telling us that that July 11th date might not actually be the case. And you might actually be waiting for an email to come. Guys, don't mess around with this. I really think this is just a total, just avoidable trap that you guys can get yourself into if you follow their advice and wait till their mailings are coming out to you and when to start certifying. I still continue to recommend this. As of July 11th, make sure that you're doing one work search activity per week if you are a regular UI or a PUA claim, okay? Hands down, it'll be the safest way to keep you guys from not getting a stop payment, not getting back into pending and having to call customer service. And you guys know how hard that is. Now, let's take a look, though, at the big change that they did make, and this is for FedEd claims. So let's take a look at the text. Claimants on federal state extended duration benefits must keep a written record of their effort to conduct three work search activities a week, such as applying for a job or attending a job fair. Okay, guys, this is a big change. So remember now, if you've got regular UI and PUA, you only need to do one work search activity. I recommend that you do more, but the minimum is one work search activity per week. They're now stating that for those of you with Fed Ed claims, you must now do three, minimum three work search activities per week. I don't know why they made this change. Uh, they're demanding that you absolutely keep a written record, uh, but let's go back to the regular PUA and UI side, guys. Like keep a written record as well. You have to keep a record in case they decide to check your work search activities. Okay, guys. So pretty much the, you know, requirements are the same, except regular UI and PUA need to do one per week at a minimum and Fed Ed now needs to do three. So that's a big change. Make sure you guys are aware of this in your weekly work search activities going forward. I want to touch on one last item here, and this is around the Cal jobs requirements. Okay. So EDD clearly states the following. Let's take a look. Those filing new regular claims after July 11th must register on Cal jobs. While this is recommended, but optional for most other claimants. Okay. So they're stating that for any claims starting on or after July 11th, they must register with Cal jobs. But EDD is literally stating here, we recommend that you apply for Cal jobs. This is my recommendation as all as well. I think that you guys want to register with Cal jobs because even though your claim may have started before July 11th, the way that EDD's computer system looks at all these claims and creates all these little glitches, you know, a lot of them unexpected. 
I don't want you guys to get caught in any type of situation where EDD's computer system is looking at your claim thinking that it should be connected to Cal Jobs because it thinks your claim is after July 11th and you don't have your application into Cal Jobs and it throws up a pending situation. Not saying it's going to happen, but it's not worth taking the chance. EDD is also recommending that you apply and get set up with Cal Jobs. So guys, please do it. It's a way to stop you guys from having, you know, payment issues. It's a way to stop you guys from having pending status issues. All right, guys, I know there's a lot of information and I really appreciate you guys tracking with me. If you guys have any questions on this, let me know in the comments section down here below. I'll make sure I address them as best I can. And look, as always, I'm going to throw the demos on the back end of the video here in case you guys need that tip for how to call for free that still works about 50% of the time, as well as how to use a paid service if you need to call EDD uh, you know, for a pending situation and you don't want to deal with all the dialing and all the hassle that goes along with that. So that demo will be at the back end as well. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for liking. Thanks for helping me build the channel. It's been a lot of fun. And also I'll be doing a live stream very soon where we're giving out some more of those connections to get you guys connected to GDL using that paid service called Claimer. So keep an eye out for that video update that'll be coming out soon. Thanks a lot. So here's a little trick to call someone quickly, although it's still very slow. So dial 833-978-2511 and you'll hit one for English. At about one minute and 20 seconds later, you're going to hit 132 to navigate through the menu very quickly. 99 times out of 100, they're just going to say thank you for calling or too busy to take your call now. And then they're going to hang up on you. Just redial again and again and again. Now you'll always be able to call this number over and over again for free, but I'm going to show you how to use a paid version that helps a lot. Alright guys, so we're going to go to Claimer.com. First thing you'll do is enter in your phone number, including the zip code. The next thing is go ahead and select California from the scroll down list. Now that you've done that, press the call now button. This next screen is very simple. You'll enter your name, your email, and all of your card information. Press the green pay button to move on. Now you're going to get a success message. This success message will let you know that you should be receiving a call from 800 300 5616. All right, now that you've received this phone number, answer it and stay on hold. This is your callback from EDD. Do not use their hold feature, all right? They will disconnect you. Stay on the line until an EDD rep picks up.